guys, we're at Gander Outdoors. And they have a ton of RVs for sale here. They got over a hundred, I think, at least. Any kind of RV you can think of. Somebody in a Challenger. They got this huge flag right here. I don't know. That thing must look like it's three stories tall. Let's see what they got in the outdoors here. Okay, inside the store here. They got all kinds of stuff of course as you would know um, bunch of fishing stuff down here kayaks shoes clothing some more kayaks back over here which I like kayaks I've got a couple of those and then in the back here you got guns you got guns over here and They've got some of these nice um, campers here. Some of these are pretty nice. Kind of takes the rough out of roughnecking, doesn't it, when you get in something like some of these. And some of the prices are not too terribly bad, but uh, it's always a whole lot cheaper to buy a used one than a new one. You save a ton of money. But they have anything that you want. Like they got over a hundred RVs here, so. Pretty nice. And right here we got safes. Got a digital keypad, which are nice. These are small to the width of my hand here. It's pretty small. Uh, it says it weighs 159 pounds. Price 455. And uh, to be honest with you guys, I would not waste my money on one this size. Here's a smaller one than that. And this is for four guns, and the other one is for 12. One's for 18. And the 455 is supposed to hold 18. That's not quite right, probably. You see, my hand went right here for this little safe right here. You could just pick this safe up and carry it off. The weight's 159 pounds. So. There's more safes. This is uh, like $581. This is a lot bigger than the others. Uh, it's supposed to be hold, hold 24 guns. And my hand width is probably 8 inches or so, like 16 inches width there. Maybe it's close to the same in depth. And you got your shelves here. And this is 601. Still, this is not big enough. Here are a few more safes that are bigger. And you can see my hand right here. This is pretty good size here. And this is a pretty nice one here. I like the turn. Handles on these and the keypads are really nice. They've got a battery underneath here, generally, a like nine volt battery. You can take out and change, it'll start blinking when that happens. You can put any combination of numbers that you come up with in here for you to unlock this safe. And uh, this one's 
it's hard to tell on this camera, but this is a decent size, but uh, it's still not quite large enough. Okay, now this one is holds 64 guns and the price here is $689, which is only a couple hundred dollars more than the other ones, but this is a lot bigger uh, safe. I've got it locked, but uh, this is pretty big right here. And this is the one that you want. Uh, Buying a safe is like buying a uh, a uh, trailer to pull around. Five by ten is pretty good size. You get something four by eight that you'll find is too small in the long run. Safes are generally people buy too small a safe, and it's like you want something bigger like this. And sixty minute fire rating, waterproof, seventy two hours. And again, the keypad. And the great thing about the keypad, you can put your numbers in here and it'll light up and let you know that you put the correct numbers in. And then you just turn your handle right here and open it up. I wish this one would open up. But uh, see what happens, you say, well, how much is this big boy here? This is bigger than the other one. And that's nine hundred and sixty nine dollars and actually this is a, a really good deal the reason this is a good deal because like if you have guns you may have seven hundred eight hundred or thousand dollars in one gun and if you've got a lot of guns you may have twenty thirty thousand dollars or fifty or sixty thousand dollars in guns and plus you got jewelry uh you've got cameras you've got uh sentimental things all kinds of things that uh, are priceless to you pictures documents all that stuff you can put all that stuff in here in this kind of safe and when you leave home and go somewhere uh, you know that if somebody breaks in your house they're not going to be able to get any of your valuables because you're going before you leave you can make sure you have all your valuables in here when you're not at home you make sure all your valuables are in your safe and uh Sometimes you learn that the hard way. Now this one's supposed to hold like 69 guns. And it's water safe. So, I mean, somebody takes a fire hose and sprays it, it's not going to go in between there. Um, generally, a lot of safe, uh, when they heat up, if it's a fire and they heat up, there's a special material in here that expands and seals the, the doors and everything. So, uh, the heat and the mortar and stuff like that can't get through but you think about it, if you've got in your house if you have pistols guns uh, shotguns rifles uh, jewelry cameras uh, knives that are expensive anything that cost over a thousand dollars if you got again twenty thirty thousand dollars worth of valuables and you go you go on a trip somewhere you go traveling you need a safe to put all your guns in, put your knives and all that stuff in because then you know that you don't have to worry about that while you're gone. A bad mistake a lot of people make, of course, is when they travel, they put it on Facebook and say, we're going to so-and-so. Well, people know then that you're not home. They can break into your house. So uh, for $1,000, this safe is is worth a hundred times more than that for the convenience and uh, peace of mind that you get by having a safe. I can't express that enough. People have had all their stuff stolen. Watches is another thing. I collect watches too and a lot of different things and I have two huge safes at my house and uh, in another one on top of that so I make sure that everything I have is well protected. So that's my story about safes and well worth the money guys. Okay. Here they don't have a lot of black powder stuff. They do have one pistol here in a brass frame, which is nice, but I don't like the brass frame much like that. Not as durable as steel. Quick reloaders, that's nice. 
bullet starter. And I don't know if you can tell it, but this this is really for bullets right here because it's got a conical uh, made uh, insert so you don't uh, damage the conical bullets when you push those in instead of using a round ball type. CVA, wads, patches, can't have enough patches. Nice ramrod, $30. And Sabbath 609 for number 11 caps, 609 for number 10 caps. A lot of times you need both. That's P for pistol right here, $20 per day. 3FG American Pioneer Powder, $20. That's cheaper. Blackhorn, $45. And more power decks, it's rifle R R S and Hodgkins Taiwan eighteen dollars and seventy nine cent international. They got triple seven. Triple seven is about thirty percent more powerful than regular Go X black powder. And it's a little expensive, thirty dollars. And they got 2F for rifles, 3F for pistols. And they got some more Hodgkin down here. So, about it on the black powder stuff and got inline stuff. Black powder. 100 caps, number 11 there too. And the solvent, stuff like that, and butter for the bore butter, we even call that for the barrels too. And they got some really nice crossbows right here. If you've never shot a crossbow, you ought to shoot one. They are really fun to shoot and they have no kick to them. It's just like shooting a, uh, a BB gun and amazingly accurate, too. Amazingly accurate. Uh, and again, a lot of fun to shoot. Hardest thing about a crossbow, depending on what, what design it is, is getting your string back. A lot of those were like 150 pound pull, at least the ones I had were. And they make compound bows a lot smaller. I used to shoot a lot of archery, and uh, so I like the these bows right here. Uh, these are small bows right here. It's amazing how they technology big cams on it too, huge cams on that generate power. Yeah, I did my own fletching on my arrows and stuff like that too. And here's a fletching jig that you need that if you're going to do arrows and stuff like that because you're going to knock off the fletching on them. So for that, $33. Buy your feathers and your glue. They've got it all right here. Fletching glue. Or a fuse. And your knocks. You'll break those. And your fletching by that pull those off and use your glue to stick them to your to your arrow they have to be at an angle and that's where the problem is is that when you fletch you can't just do it by sight this right here helps you put the arrow in and put the fletching on at an angle the perfect angle so that's why it's important to have a fletching jig now here's a cheap fletching jig six dollars What's that say? $56, man. And this is a cheaper one, which probably works as, about as well. Nice. Now here's some portable stands. Um, well, I mean, 
I guess you call them portable, but um, tear them out and put them wherever you want to put them in a tree or something like that. And that's not very high up right there. You may have other rods to go in here. I don't know. $180. Two buddies. I can't imagine have two people in one stand unless you got a child with you. That'd be the only way for me. Um, you know, I don't see portable stand, which I call the portable ones. I got one that's called a Predator, and it's the kind that you attach to the tree and you put your feet in the base of it, and kind of like this right here would be. You strap your feet in the base of it right here, and it's got a, a bar it goes around the tree, and uh, you just grab it and pull yourself up, and you pull this base plate up and push your foot down, and it locks, and you just keep inching up like an inchworm up the tree. And uh, it's called a predator. I think it was, it was fairly back then when I bought it. It's probably about one hundred and sixty dollars, probably like three or four hundred dollars today. Aircraft aluminum. And that way, you pick just about any tree. It has to be a certain size. This size right here is pretty good, probably 10-inch tree. And wrap it around, and you can go up any tree. The thing I liked about it was that when you were scouting and you saw where a path where deer were going through, you could always take your tree, uh, portable tree stand, put it on your back, because it was just this part right here is all you had, just that part right there and go up any tree and be waiting for them the next morning. That's one thing I like about the portable. You can't get hurt in those if you don't use the safety belt, but uh, there's more archery targets and stuff here. Here's another thing I like, kayaks. They make all kinds of open kayaks and it's got a big cockpit in this one right here. Now that would be pretty nice to fish in. The open kayaks like this one are good to fish in. That's like two people. Uh, here's a nice one, Perceptions. And this camouflage deal here. Put your tackle box in here. That's pretty big. I like the smaller one better. Cut through the water a little easier. Don't have as much drag. And really nice now what i do is i fish out of my kayaks and uh go on the lake you don't have to go on the river you can go on the lake anywhere else i would say not get way out there in the middle of nowhere on the lake but uh i've done it but uh you can paddle for miles and not even realize how far you've paddled and they have paddles over here these paddles usually come a, come apart in the middle, and you can have both paddles uh, like parallel to the floor, or you can have one turn this way and the other turn this way, which is really maybe the better way of doing it. And you can buy, these are not the expensive paddles right here, uh, but you can buy carbon fiber one. I've got one like carbon fiber and uh, a friend of mine had a super light carbon fiber one and I think his was about years ago it was like $300 probably like five or six hundred dollar paddle now you can hold it with one finger I mean it was just so light and durable strong and uh, a lot of times these paddles are like thirty dollars to a uh, to a hundred dollars and they go on up depending if you want a lighter one so all different colors and they generally float so that's good but I like the kayak so especially fly rod fishing that's what I like to do a lot, a lot of you have all kind of fishing rods and I like good fishing rods all kind of lures and baits. You know, there's all the different colors of lures, baits, whatnot. Most of that stuff, to me, is made to catch the uh, consumer, not the fish. 
Because as a consumer, you look at all these beautiful colors and you say, man, that is so pretty. You know, and you go by pretty, that's not, that's not going to catch fish what you think is pretty. Fish go after what they know that looks normal in the water. They just don't look normal in the water. They don't generally hit. So, I like all this stuff right here. It's pretty, it catches your eye, but you have to use lures that look like whatever's in that body of water that you're fishing if you want to catch fish. Because they know, that's their, that's their territory, that's their home. They know what looks normal and abnormal. And uh, so, be careful what you buy. Now this is one of my favorite colors right here. I caught a lot of fish on that color, chartreuse or is that a chartreuse or whatever color that is. You can see it, but that's especially on fly rod bugs and stuff like that. Got a lot of fish on that. Beetle spins work real good. One thing I will say, like these different rods and stuff, I don't really know the quality of these rods, but. Years and years ago, I bought Shimano rods, lightning rods, uh, uh, like a real light, lightweight, medium weight, and a heavyweight Shimano rod. And they were expensive. Today, I guess you'd probably be about $250 a piece for those things. But they're beautiful. They're carbon rods when they were first coming out, and they were just beautiful rods, and, and they last a lifetime. I mean, literally a lifetime of fishing and Shimano reels back then, they last forever too. So if you're going to be in the fishing, uh, look at these different colors, you're going to be in the fishing, buy really good rod and reels that'll last you a lifetime so you don't have to keep buying them. Zebcos are okay, but I mean, they all mess up eventually. See all these colors here. That's in the packaging. It just tracks the consumer. But to me, about eighty percent. Well, maybe we'll say seventy-five percent. Probably to me, tracks the consumer, uh, not the fish. So you got to be careful about that. Now here's something worth showing. This is see how big my finger, my thumb is right here. This is ultralight type reels right here. They're so small, and the rod is small, and uh, some of the most fun you ever have is fishing ultralight, especially if you're fishing like for brim and crappie. When you catch one on the ultralight, they're going to feel like they weigh three pounds. I mean, that rod will bend and get a good rod, and uh, these things are, are really, really nice ultralight. I've had the most fun fishing uh, with my Shimano Ultralight rod and reel over the years. Catching brim, like I said, feel like they're going to break the rod, but they can't or they won't. So that's a lot of fun right there, the Ultralights. You can see my thumb is just the big, the small reel works great. Okay, we're looking at the flag at the Gander Outdoors. This is one huge, huge flag. And I don't know if we can give you a comparison here. But it is 40 feet tall, 80 feet long. So we look at four story height and eight stories long, basically. I mean, you could, with the wind blowing the way it is right now, you could just watch this flag as it undulates in the wind, how beautiful it is. Like watching fish in an aquarium. I have an aquarium too, but this is like watching fish. You see the, the different uh, moves and angles the flag makes uh, under the wind, especially being so, so big.